Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we want to talk about network attached storages, why you might want to build one for yourself, and why you definitely should probably avoid the commercially available options. First, let's go ahead and talk about what is a network attached storage and why you might want one. So, network attached storage or NAS is exa exactly as it sounds. It is a hard drive bank or some other data storage system that is attached to your network. This means that every computer on your network can access it, including your phones and things like this. Now, some people will do things like building a local Nextcloud instance, which can certainly function as a network attached storage, albeit it's more based for cloud interactions rather than uh, a network attached storage. Um, you will probably want one because A, it's a great way to have a good backup of data. But I will warn you, if you get ransomware on your any computer on your network, it can backtrack and encrypt your network attached storage as well. So do not rely exclusively on that network attached storage for backups. You need to make sure you're doing regular backups of even that. And I'll talk about that briefly as well. So having the network attached storage is gonna allow you to easily share photos, back up your phones, back up any other data that you need. Uh, in my case, I use it for a media server. So all the, the movies, the music, everything that I have that I can watch on any device in my internal network, all is e able to be run very easily on that, which is something you can't do as well through Nextcloud, by the way. So uh, those reasons why you might want it. Now, the easiest option is to go out and pick up a, uh, I think Synology is one brand. I know uh, Western Digital has a brand and there's a bunch of other ones out there as well that will get you a good commercial product of a network attached storage. The problem is most of these, mostly because they're trying to put them on the internet so you can attach your network attached storage from outside your house easily become every one of them that I know of has had major hacking breaches. We've had people getting in, we've had data leaking out, and that is kind of problematic. Now, does this mean I cannot access my network attached storage from outside? It does not. All you need to do is attach a VPN onto your network and use the VPN for exactly what a VPN is supposed to be used for, which is accessing network resources from a different external location. I have a video about how to create a VPN and connect that to your home office. I'll go ahead and put that video in the description down below. It's a couple years old, but the information on that is still valid. So uh, we covered why you might want a network attached storage, and then we covered why you probably do not want to buy a commercial one. What can you do then? Well, there are several different options you have. One of those is, I believe it is TrueNAS, which I think is based on BSD, at least it was. One of the reasons I haven't specifically looked at that one, uh, and I'm more comfortable with Debian. So I personally use Open Media Vault. Now, again, I have two good tutorials on this channel. One of them is getting pretty old at this point in time. The more recent one is done on a Raspberry Pi and it is still, again, up to date and looks good. And so I'll go ahead and keep those tutorials, linking those down below if this is something you'd like to try. But I'm going to talk about two options that you have and the pros and the cons of each. The first is you can build your network attached storage from any computer system laying around. So my first network attached storage was on a mini tower. It was not exactly this one, but it was very close to this one. This tower here is a Dell Inspirian tower. I picked it up for 75 bucks at a um, um, surplus, uh, I'm sorry, this is an Optiplex 7010. Very good machine, by the way. Picked this one up for uh, 75 bucks at a um, uh, surplus and storage. Uh, these ones are nice because it's very easy to open it up. There's just a handle switch here. You can open it up. Now, the one I did, I built mine on was a, um, uh, it was a, a Dell Inspirian um, micro tower, or I guess these would be called more mini towers. The reason I would want to use one of these, the biggest pro of this, you get an easier RAID system and an easier ability and more secure ability to put your hard drives in it. So... You can open these guys up. Now, typically these are gonna have one hard drive and a CD-ROM. So what I did on my tutorial video where I built a NAS out of one of these machines, I actually took out the DVD-ROM and I took out the traditional 
uh, three inch hard drive that is in those. And I've got a conversion kit that's gonna convert two laptop hard drives into the size of one um, desktop hard drive. And that way I had two mirrored hard drives and I set those up in a RAID. So if one drive failed, we still have the second drive as a backup. So there's basically two copies of everything on here. You can do that with the Raspberry Pi, but it becomes a little bit more difficult. And of course, one of the problems with the Raspberry Pi is the hard drives have to be dangling around unless we cover some of the kits. We'll get into those in a bit. Um, but uh, with that system set up, this is a much better option if you have a lot of space, if power's not a huge concern of yours, and you're, you know, you have a, a place to just kind of put all your networking stuff off to the side. And that's what I did. I had one hub central in my house where I had my, my router, I had my modem, I had my NAS, and a few other components as well. And uh, that's what I did with the larger one. The biggest downside of this, of course, um, it is bigger and bulkier. So if you do not want, uh, if you do not want the um, the extra computer laying around, that will be a downside for you. They tend to be more expensive. I mean, like I said, this was a salvage one. I got it for 75, but these things sold for like 500 bucks when they first came out. And uh, the other one that I had, I think I paid, I think I paid 130. 30, 140 for it, but it didn't have a power cable uh, because I had plenty of extra power cables. Uh, I was able to, to talk my way down into a little discount because lack of power cables and stuff. So they do use higher power. Uh, they are a little bit more costly, but it is easier to build a RAID out of them. And uh, what I did with it is I used the USB ports on the front. I ran my Open Media Vault operating system off of a USB drive. And then the internal hard drives were just all the data storage. And then, of course, you need to make sure you have a good internet connection. So this guy here, at least the one I had, I'm pretty sure this one has as well a gigabit ethernet port. So that is one of your options. Now my newer tutorial is set up through a Raspberry Pi. So we use a Raspberry Pi and an external hard drive. You can actually attach multiple external hard drives to this. And there is a kit that you can buy to make a NAS so that basically you'll stack the two hard drives on top of it and then uh, plug them all in and it'll be a nice more condensed form. I did not do mine like that. I actually used um, just a standard external hard drive. I actually think I used an internal hard drive with an external enclosure is what I used personally. Now, here's the, the downsides of the Raspberry Pi. Number one is you have to make sure that you're monitoring your power usage because Raspberry Pis have a limit to the amount of power you can use. So I explicitly looked for a lower power hard drive. Uh, I've not noticed any performance issues with it, uh, by the way, um, but you have to be more cognizant of your amount of power or you have to supply extra power for your external drives, which means it's going to up the power a little bit, but not significantly. Uh, in fact, the power usage is roughly half or so of what uh, the full system is. On the tutorial, I actually did the power calculations showing that it was a lot lower power than the old setup. Um, the other major advantage, it is small if you're in a smaller space or you're a minimalist like me and you do not like a bunch of stuff laying around. These are really nice. And uh, when I actually built this for my original testing with the NAS is I actually built a little geek wall. I just got a, a piece of uh, pegboard and literally just attached everything to the wall and hung the pegboard on the wall. And then it looked kind of neat also. I got a, got rid of the table I had sitting over there and it was kind of neat. But they are much smaller, they are way low power, and for the most part, they are cheaper. Now, for a while, you could not get Raspberry Pis. Right now, they are saying that the amount of stock inventory coming out in the Raspberry Pi is coming back. So you should be able to find them. Uh, this one here is the Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, with four gigabytes of RAM. So they, uh, I think uh, last I knew, I think they retail around 50 or so dollars. And then you just need a good external hard drive. So with the external hard drives and the Pi, you're already about half the cost of getting a full tower, especially if you would need to pick up the extra hard drives, whether you're doing the Pi or the full tower. Um, the con, it is, um, it is, easier to run just a single disk. On my current setup, I do not have a RAID setup. I just have one single disk 
because I can power the Pi and one disc without any external power supply systems. And here in the van, I actually just have a, uh, just a single five volt line going to that. I have a five volt three amp line going to the Raspberry Pi. It draws just enough power. Now, what I do though is about every month or so, I have an external hard drive that uh, I can plug into the Raspberry Pi that I do have to supply extra power for it to make it work right. I supply extra power to that. I plug that guy in here, and then I have it set up to make a sync backup. So I always have about a month old at the oldest backup of everything on my network attached storage. That way I do not end up losing, um, losing any data under any case. And I did not have an issue where I had a hard drive simply fail without me having any warning about it. So I can easily bring back everything in my NAS should I need to. So those are your kind of uh, kind of things. Now again, Open Media Vault does have a Raspberry Pi build in addition to a full computer build. I'm sure the, the True NAS does as well. And there might actually be some other NAS options out there also, I've not looked into those. I can tell you I've been using Open Media Vault as my onboard um, network attached storage. I think I've been using it now for like five years. Zero problems at all. It works really well. And um, when I had the apartment, it was always on. So I could always access everything from every device. Here in the van, I have a separate toggle switch and I really only turn it on when I really need to. Now I have links to the tutorials with the complete details about how to build those in the full tower and in the Raspberry Pi. I'll leave those in the uh, description of the video so you can find those on the channel that, uh, that you're watching this on. I'll keep the links to the YouTube one, um, but they should all be on all of the other channels, I think. Uh, so you can have a look over there. Of course, our videos are cross-posted to Rumble, Odyssey, and BitChute, so you can hunt around for all of our videos on those other so, uh, sections. So with that, uh, hopefully this helped you to figure out a new project, building a uh, NAS system out of the operating system uh, called Open Media Vault is what I'm using. There are other, other options out there as well, which are probably equally good. Open Media Vault though does everything I need it to do. And I have good tutorials on building this network system on both of your uh, types of computers here. With that, guys, thanks for watching. Have a look over the website, switchtolinks.com, for some of those tutorials and things like that. With that, thanks for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.